Okay, so we've seen how audio clips can work and how we can affect the clip properties with audio clips. When we're working with virtual instruments, uh, we work with clips as well when we start to play them and capture ideas, but MIDI clips work a little bit differently. So before we even get into MIDI clips, let's talk about what exactly MIDI is. We can see the word MIDI right here. And as you can see, everything's capitalized. So this probably gives you an idea that this is an acronym. And MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Essentially, it's a way for us to use uh, MIDI controllers to interface with these virtual instruments so that we can play them and have a surface that feels like we're actually playing an instrument and not just using a mouse to click things on a computer. Now, as I said, I'm not using a MIDI interface right now. I'm not using a MIDI controller, uh, but there are still ways that we can play these MIDI instruments without having a MIDI controller. So if you don't happen to have one yourself, don't fret, uh, you will be fine. Now, I wanna go back into the categories here and I wanna start looking at some of these virtual instruments because if I wanna play one of these, if I wanna add one of these to my set, I need to place the virtual instrument onto a MIDI track. Now, earlier we looked at the analog instrument. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in again. Uh, let's go to a preset. We'll go into the bass category. Let me expand the browser so I can see things a bit better. And uh, let me just find a random preset. That's actually pretty cool, but not really what I'm looking for. There we go, we're gonna keep it simple for now. So I'm gonna take this preset and I will drag and drop it onto this MIDI track. I let go, and now on this MIDI track, the name is changed to reflect the instrument that I just put on there. And this is the instrument. Now, if I wanna be able to play this instrument, uh, what I need to do is make it so that this MIDI track is ready to receive MIDI input. So when we're talking about MIDI, MIDI is uh, something that will allow us to send certain messages to these virtual instruments. When you think about playing an instrument, there's a couple things that are really important when it comes to the sound that's being generated. There's the actual pitch, so the specific note that's being played, and then there's the loudness, uh, which when we're talking about MIDI is determined by the velocity of the individual notes. If you think about playing the drums, the harder you strike the drum will be considered a higher velocity. The harder you st uh, strike a snare drum, the louder that snare drum's gonna be. The quieter you strike the snare drum, the quieter it will be. So that is uh, denoted by velocity when we're talking about MIDI. So inside of MIDI clips, we're gonna be able to play with MIDI notes and also velocity. But before we get to that point, we need to make sure that the MIDI instrument is going to receive any MIDI that we send to it. So if we wanna be able to play this MIDI instrument with our uh, MIDI controller, we need to first arm the track. By arming the track, you're simply gonna hit the record button and now this MIDI track is armed. That means it's listening for any MIDI that's coming from any MIDI controllers that we may have connected. Now, like I said, I don't have a MIDI controller here, but I can still play this instrument by using my computer keyboard. Let's turn our attention up here to the upper right-hand corner of the screen. We have a few buttons over here uh, that are next to our CPU meter. There's one that says MIDI, there's one that says key, and then there's this little keyboard icon that happens to be on right now. When this is on, you can use the A row and the Q row on your computer keyboard like an actual MIDI keyboard. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to do this, the A row functions like the white keys on a piano and the Q row functions like the black keys on a piano. If you look at a piano, you'll notice there's not a black key next to every single white key. So some of the keys on the Q row are not gonna trigger notes because it's just like having a keyboard. There's no black key between the notes E and F. So there's not gonna be a Q row key between the notes E and F that'll trigger a sound because there wouldn't be a black key there. Another thing to note is that the Q button doesn't trigger a note. The Q button brings you into the hot swap mode, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. But just so you know, if you bring in an instrument or a device, let's say you wanna swap that device out for something else. The instrument is also known as a device. There's a button here and this is a hot swap button. This will bring you back to the browser, whatever location in the browser you got this from, and allow you to easily swap this for another instrument. You can do the same thing, that hot swap, by pressing the Q button on your keyboard, okay? So just keep that in mind. The Q button's not gonna trigger a note. The Q button brings you to the hot swap mode. If I wanted to swap this out, say for that, I've switched them quickly, and now if I press my A key, that's that sound, and I don't like that sound. <laughs> so let me go back. That's fine. We'll go with that. Let me get out of my hot swap mode here. All right. So my MIDI track is armed. 
I've set it up so I can use my computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. I know that my A row acts like the white keys. It's actually quite loud, let's turn that down. And I know that the Q row, starting with W, not Q, acts like the black keys. Okay, so far so good. So we got the track armed, it's accepting MIDI, and now we're able to play this virtual instrument. So that is essentially how MIDI will work. If we wanna play any of the instruments that come with Ableton Live, or if we have third-party VSTs, and we wanna play those instruments, the instrument needs to be placed on a MIDI track. The MIDI track needs to be armed, and then we can start using our MIDI keyboard, or we can use the computer keyboard, as long as this is on, and start playing our instrument. Now you might notice that there's only a certain range of notes you're able to play if you're using your computer keyboard in this way. We can transpose the computer keyboard, I and mean, if you remember from before, by transposing, we're just changing the octave, we're either going up or down, um, and transposing this in octaves by 12 semitones. If I wanna play, right now I'm hitting the A button. The A button on my computer keyboard is triggering the note C. But maybe I wanna play C an octave lower. If I press the Z button on my computer keyboard right now, this will bring me down one octave. And if you look in this little area down here, when I press the Z button, it'll tell me what range my computer keyboard is gonna play. So let me transpose it down again, press Z. And now it says that I'm in octave C1 to D2. Okay, if I wanna transpose it up, I can hit the X button. So now I'm in octave C2 to D3. Okay. So now we know how to put a MIDI instrument onto a MIDI track. We can arm the track and we can use our computer keyboard to play this instrument. But we still haven't looked at the anatomy of a MIDI clip and how it differs from an audio clip. Let's check that out now.